It's Allison from the Law School Toolbox. Thanks for joining us for the second semester reboot series. Let's do it. The next common misstep is one that professors love to tell you when you go talk to them. You are, quote, too conclusory. What does this mean? Basically, you didn't show your work or you didn't move through each necessary step in the analysis. Jumping from the issue and rule to the conclusion is very common on 1L exams, but it leaves a lot of potential points on the table. So it's something you want to be very aware of when you review your exam answers and talk with your professor. There are several factors that can cause this problem. First and most common is trying to answer the question. The temptation is to come up with who wins when you're faced with a hypothetical and a question. This is exacerbating when the call of the question asks you to take one side or the other. Contrary to expectations, however, even in this scenario, the professor is looking for an analysis that considers all sides of every issue, meaning both those arguments that support a party and those that run counter to that party's claims, which leads to the second problem, failing to argue both sides of the equation. Rather than just writing something like, it is likely that the court will rule in favor of plaintiff because she made a strong case for negligence, you'd want to think about and discuss what the defendant's arguments would be. If you find this challenging, work on mentally flipping your point of view, where you pretend that you're the lawyer for the other side. What's the best case you could make for your client? Then switch back and make the counterargument, until there's nothing else to say on the topic. Then, and only then, are you ready to draw a conclusion. Ultimately, a law school essay should read like a discussion with points and counterpoints, rather than a series of conclusory statements in favor of one party or the other. As you review your work, Look for places where you skip steps in the analysis or ignored counterarguments. Resisting this temptation in the future will pay off mightily in better grades. The first and most important step in avoiding being too conclusory or ignoring counterarguments is simply to be aware of the temptation. Especially if the question asks you to advocate for a position, resist the temptation to write only one side of the argument. Even a strong advocate needs to consider the other side's arguments because that's how they'll best be able to counter them. Conclusory analysis generally comes from the desire to answer the question. Most of your education to date has been directed towards finding, quote, the right answer. In law school, however, the goal is to be able to analyze the issues, not to jump to the right answer. Often there really is no clear, correct answer, and reasonable people can disagree about the appropriate outcome. This takes some time to settle in, and so first semester exams often have essay exams that are way too heavy on the conclusions. The goal should be, when writing your essay, to use the facts to analyze each element of the rule and to discuss whether particular facts help or hurt the argument of each of the parties. Applying the facts in this manner will result in an analysis that is not too conclusory and discusses both sides. So you're still not convinced the answer is secondary to the analysis? Here's a story. I was a Civ Pro TA, and at some point in the semester, I compared my final exam answer with another TA's answer to find out what the right answer was to a tough problem that had been covered in class and had actually been on our exam. We were both surprised to find out our conclusions were completely opposite. We were both TAs, we did the same analysis, we reached completely different conclusions. That shows you the conclusion is not very important. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. Hit us up at lawschooltoolbox.com to find out more about our one-on-one tutoring help.